Hey everyone, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and this is the wall of B550 motherboards. Let's do this. With its luxurious curves, the AOC Aegon AG353UCG is not just a pretty picture. Featuring a wide quad HDR1000 display at 200Hz and G-Sync Ultimate, you too can game your way to victory. Check the link in the description to find out more. So today sees the launch of B550, and as you can see, I've got seven motherboards here. We have actually got more motherboards over on eTechnics.com, so we will link to that in the description below, so definitely go and check that out. So what does B550 bring us? Well, essentially, it's the successor to B450, which for the most part was probably AMD's best-selling range of motherboards. But now we have some of the features from X570, without, I guess, in theory, the kind of increased pricing that we see on X570, because there's a lot of features that, I guess, most users won't actually need. So we do have PCI Express 4 on all of these motherboards. That's a given with B550. But instead of X570 having an abundance of PCI Express 4.0, we only get it in sort of dribs and drabs here and there. You know, one slot here, one slot there. One of these boards actually has it on multiple slots, but that's gonna reduce down on the costing. Now talking about costing in general, all of the prices I have on every single one of these motherboards could be subject to change. Obviously we're filming this before the actual launch, so I just wanna make that clear that if you're watching this video after launch, pricing may sort of be adjusted by 10, 20 pounds, 10, 20 dollars, somewhere around that price point. So yeah, I guess really we should uh, jump in and have a look at our first motherboard. So to start with the B550 Tomahawk, as we know the B450 Tomahawk was probably the best selling board in that series. So we get the pretty kind of industrious look to it. Everything feels and looks pretty damn solid. There's a tiny little bit of RGB on here. Pricing wise, coming in at around $179, about £170 in the UK, which is more expensive than the B450 equivalent. But now you get PCI Express 4.0. So we get that on the first M.2 slot up here. We don't get it on the second slot though, but they are both shielded. We do get up to 128 gig of 5100 megahertz support. We get a decent upgraded VRM setup where we're looking at 10 plus two plus one. So again, a nice little upgrade from the B450. The other key features on this board come down to the rear I.O. We actually get dual Ethernet, with one of them being 2.5G. There's also Type-C and an abundance of USB ports. Other than that, it's got everything that you'd expect from a Tomahawk board, and it's probably one of my favourite boards really out on the B550 chipset. <laughs> So moving kind of a little bit smaller, we have the B550i Aorus Pro AX. So Pro AX means it has got Wi-Fi. It's a mini ITX motherboard. It has a backplate on it to assist with cooling. And it's gonna need that because it actually has 90 amp phases on here. And when I say that, it has eight of them. I mean, it's absolutely astronomical for a mini ITX board. It has PCI Express 4.0 underneath this large heatsink, and it also has another M.2 slot on the rear. Be a mini ITX, single X16 slot with shielding on there, and blistering fast memory speed up to 5400 megahertz for next gen Ryzen processors, of course. Other than that, I mean, you've got Type-C on there, you've got DisplayPort, you've got HDMI, what more could you want from a tiny little board that's gonna be coming in at around 184 pounds or around $200? Crazy. Next up is the B550 Aorus Pro. It looks a little bit basic, but for $200, what are you really expecting? We get some heat sinks over the M.2s. We get some pretty decent phases when it comes to it. We're actually looking at a 12 plus two 50 amp phase design. Large chunky heat sinks with the fins array on there. We've got a large heat sink over here. Not much RGB, sadly, only a little bit just up here, but you can obviously spice things up with addressable and non-addressable RGB headers. There's plenty of X16 slots on here, one of them being shielded. There's plenty of fan headers. We've got six SATA ports. On the rear, there's no Wi-Fi, but to be honest again, for $200, what do you really expect? It's a little bit basic, and honestly, I think there's a little bit better out there for sort of the money on B550. So next up we have the B550 Aorus Master. I love the Master range, but it's a bit weird to see such a high-end board on I guess a mid-range platform, but we do get some really cool stuff. So we have three M.2 slots on here. 
And as far as I know, this is the only board where all three of them are PCI Express 4.0 compliant. We have three X16 slots, one of them being shielded. When it comes to the CPU support and phases and things like that, we're actually looking at 16 70 amp phases. So it is gonna need some pretty extreme cooling, which it seems like it has. Shielded memory, we have, I mean, it's got it all. It's even got the solid metal around the power connectors on here and on here. We have Wi-Fi, we have Type-C, we have gold-plated audio connectors, an abundance of USB. $300 though, maybe it's a little bit too close to kind of what you can get for X570, but it is definitely a standout board when you look at it and compare the features, especially with them three uh, PCI Express 4.0 slots compared to other motherboards from B550. So next up we have one from ASUS with the Tough range. This is the B550M Plus Wi-Fi. So as the name suggests, it's tough, it's micro ATX, it has Wi-Fi. There's a few little quirks with it. Firstly, I've never been a fan of the Tough styling since I changed it all quite a few years ago. I mean, it's got yellow on there, which kind of dictates the color of your build. It does have a large heatsink area though to keep the VRMs nice and cool. Now speaking of them, it does actually have eight plus two phases, which is a nice little step up from the predecessor. The weirdest thing about this board is this top M.2 slot, which is PCI Express 4.0 compliant, while this bottom one is PCI Express 3.0. But this one has a heatsink and this one doesn't. Do Zeus not realize that PCIe Gen 4 gets a lot hotter than Gen 3? Little bit of a weird one. Four SATA ports down here. It's a nice cute little board, I guess, micro ATX. As the name suggests as well, it does have Wi-Fi AX on here. It has DisplayPort, it has HDMI, loads of USBs and a PS2 combo port. Yeah, I'm not too sure on this one, but it does have two X16 slots as well. Quite nice for a micro ATX board. So next up is the B550F Gaming, probably going to be the biggest competitor to the Tomahawk. I mean, it was on B450. You get a full-size ATX board with a pretty stealthy design, apart from these weird red bits on here, which kind of, again, dictate what you're going to be doing as a theme for your build. It also has some weird Japanese writing on there, which I don't quite understand. It has two M.2 slots, both of them shielded, the top one, again, being PCI Express 4.0. We have two X16 slots of which one is shielded. We have decent memory support up to and beyond 5,000 megahertz. When it comes to the VRMs, we're actually looking at a 12 plus two phase design, a big step up from, I guess the lies from B450. We all know what that's all about. As the name dictates, it does have Wi-Fi on here. It does have type C, it has HDMI and display port. And I think this one's gonna do really, really well. So next up, and you might be a little bit surprised because it looks very similar, but this is the B550F. I mean, e-gaming, it looks the same, right? There's a little bit of extra red on here, but other than that, it has the same stealthy look. It has got a few upgraded features, mainly around kind of the VRMs. We're actually looking at a 14 plus two phase design. So there's a little bit more juice going directly to the CPU, which may assist in overclocking. Other than that, we do have again two M.2 slots, both shielded, the top one being PCI Express 4.0. Has a debug LED on it. It has three X16 slots of which two are shielded. You just have a little bit more kind of functionality and bandwidth with this board. And you should, because the price, $270, $280, maybe even around 270 pounds in the UK. Again, you get Wi-Fi, you get DisplayPort and HDMI, loads of USBs and Type-C. I just kind of fear that maybe it's a little bit too close to X570 territory when it comes to the pricing. What do you think? So now that we've sort of looked at all of the motherboards, really it's down to how well they actually performed and firstly, looking at how far we was able, able to kind of overclock them. Now, we did find that they all overclocked pretty much the same, it just varied on the voltage. So let's have a look exactly how that was.
So B550, who is it for? Well, I think honestly, if you're on B450, you're probably not gonna warrant moving up to B550 unless you want the latest and greatest features. If you're on B350, however, or even older kind of Intel territory, maybe this is the way to go forward. You're gonna get PCI Express 4.0. You're gonna get sort of type C and just faster bandwidth on a variety of different kind of connectors and connections. So just wanna give a really quick rundown. I love mini ITX motherboards and I think Gigabyte have done a really good job with this one. Probably my favorite out of all of the kind of small form factor boards. Tough gaming, I don't know. I just don't know where it belongs in terms of the styling, the design, but micro ATX, it's nice to actually see a bit more variety in the marketplace. Aorus Pro, I just don't think you really get enough for your money compared to what else is out there on the market. Maybe even looking at things like the Tomahawk. When it comes to the Master, I love it, but the price of it, maybe it's just a little bit too close to kind of where X570 is. And yes, you do, I guess, get them extra M.2 slots, which are all PCI Express 4.0 compliant, but $300, I don't know, really don't. Tomahawk, this is probably gonna be the best seller. It was on B450, so why wouldn't it be on B550? Who knows? I do feel like it's lacking in some areas like RGB, but I guess RGB is not really for everyone. F Gaming, this is a bit of a weird one because it looks exactly the same as the E Gaming to a certain degree, but it is pretty competitive with the pricing. And of course, Azus generally are a little bit more expensive, you know, overall. When it comes to the E Gaming, I mean, no concrete word on pricing on this one, but it does have a decent amount of VRMs. They've kind of learnt from their mistakes. I guess all of these brands, all these manufacturers have learnt from the mistakes of doubling up on the VRMs and things like that. So there you go, guys. Let me know, which board would you actually go for out of all of these? If you do want to find out a little bit more information, you can head over to etechnics.com where we do have a lot more kind of in-depth detail on all of these motherboards and you can see exactly how they compare against other platforms and things like that as well. So there you have it. You know exactly what to do if you like this video. And other than that, be sure to check out our Patreon as well as our eTechnics merch store, which are all linked below. And I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.